His first ball in test cricket was a full toss, hit for four. His last ball claimed a wicket, his 431st. No one had bowled with greater intelligence or control, and he was a genuine all-rounder. New Zealand's greatest player, Richard Hadley, is one of ESPN's legends of cricket. The Gabba, November 1985. Richard Hadley turned in one of the greatest bowling performances in the history of cricket, taking 9 for 52 and 6 for 71 against Australia. And he's got him right through him and that makes it 6 in the second innings, 15 for the match and New Zealand have won by an innings and 41 runs. Well, my lasting memory, I guess, would be that test match in Brisbane where he got all those wickets. He was unplayable at the time. I mean, his control was excellent and it had been raining for about three days before the test match and there was just a lot of movement. It was just perfect bowling conditions and he was the ideal person to exploit them. So I think if you ask me about Richard Hadley, I'll probably say, well, that was my lasting memory because I had a sort of a ringside seat to the whole thing. So he, he was just quite brilliant on that day and, and clearly that what he had a lot of those sort of performances, but particularly that was probably one of his best. You're unbelievably respected. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. We, we look at number of wickets, you know, and you've got to actually look and say what bowlers they had with him to help him get those wickets and, and where. He just carried the attack all the time for the Kiwis, you know. Hadley leads his team off the field. One of the great performances of all time. Line, length, the perfect fast bowling ploy. No bounces, no intimidation, just pure skill. Every side needs a strike bowler, and he was their strike bowler. He, you know, on a, you know, if, if you were playing in New Zealand, the, the wickets generally tended to suit them. And if he, on his day, he would he would more often than not get five for. And I don't know quite how many fifers he'd got in his career in New Zealand, but I know on his home ground, Christchurch, he was he was always just a handful. And if he didn't get five for, there was something wrong. People think you've got 300 test wickets, you're the all-time all great bowlers, but there's a few bowlers out there with 300 test wickets, not that great. He's great. And he made two or three test hundreds as well, and good in the field, and good everywhere else. No, he was... Uh, he deserved to be every right to be the top three New Zealand sportsmen, or people of all time, really. He's, he, was, he was that good. One of the great spells of test bowling by Richard Hadley. At his best, Hadley was a clinically efficient fast bowler with remarkable control and a broad range of deliveries. I think Richard Hadley was arguably the most accurate fast bowler that, that maybe ever played, I don't know say it, that, that I, I'd seen. I mean, you felt with him he could put the ball on any sixpence that you want to place on the wicket at any time. Um, he also had everything else you needed. I mean, you know, he, he could move the ball, he could cut the ball, he, he, could, he could do what he wanted with it. But it was this, this accuracy under almost any circumstances that was, that was remarkable. Hadley to Tabaret. And that's a ball for a catch behind, and is out. And the fact that I was able to swing the ball a bit and, and to seam it and had a nagging line and length um, sort of, sort of uh, aspect to my game that I guess if you keep putting the ball in the right place and you create the opportunities and, you, and if you can catch behind the wicket you're going to get your fair share of um, return. He demanded a lot of himself, he demanded high standards from his teammates but uh, through it all uh, he is probably uh, I guess one of the wisest bowlers. He, he looked at conditions and, and used them pretty well on most occasions. And he's allowed to clear for LBW and he's out. Richard Hadley was a master at his ability to probe at batsmen's weaknesses. That really was the thing that separated him from many, many other bowlers, not only in his era, but also in past eras and future eras too. He was able to analyse a batsman's technique and spot weaknesses and, and really clinically expose them. Edge. 
without Richard Adley in the team, they wouldn't have been the same. So he was their match winner, he was their key. If he performed well, they had a chance. They could bowl the opposition out twice. And he just gave them that confidence and that class to compete really with all, all the best teams at that time. His Hadley was a much more talented batsman than is indicated by his test average of just over 27. 50 comes up, Richard Hadley, 51. Hadley could be dangerous with the bat. Uh, didn't score as many runs as I think he should have done. Uh, but having said that, he was carrying the bowling for New Zealand. He wasn't in a strong side, so something had to suffer. But yeah, he was a genuine all-rounder and genuinely very, very dangerous with the bat, as he proved on many occasions, not just against England, but opposition from around the world. Full, driven, straight back over his head, a good shot, straight, true and hard. What can I say about Richard? The bet, one of the, the best, you've got to put him up there uh, as a baller. There's not been many better ballers in the history of the game. You've only got, and as a batsman, I mean, you can put him up there. He's got crucial runs for New Zealand in test matches and uh, and he could play. He was, he could play and uh, he, he, as all-rounders go, there's not been many better. Well, a good straight hit. That could be six. That is six. Well hit, Richard Hadley. Hadley was born into cricket. His father, Walter, was one of New Zealand's best players of the 30s and 40s. He um, played in 37 and captain the 49 side, which was perhaps one of our, our greatest sides actually, some magnificent players in that side, and, and he finished around about 51. So being brought up in that family cricketing environment, uh, there's no doubt it was a huge advantage uh, with all the, the gear, the equipment, the encouragement to play the game, the, the tradition, the history, the values uh, that, that uh, you know, I was raised with. Hadley took a hat-trick in his maiden first-class appearance in 1971-72, but he was no overnight sensation. He played his first test against Pakistan in Wellington in 1973. He took two wickets for the match and made 46 batting at number eight. He would not become a fixture in the New Zealand team until 1976. In fact, if I remember my first test match, it was against uh, Pakistan um, at the Basin Reserve in Wellington in 1972-73. And I got uh, two for 88, got none for 18, scored 46 with the bat and got dropped. <laughs> and so it wasn't uh, you know, a great start in, in that sense. Hadley remained a fringe player until the third test of the 1976 home series against India. The fourth bowl he used, he took four wickets in the first innings and seven for 23 in the second. His place in the New Zealand team would never again be in question. Hadley again. And this time he's gone, put behind. At Wellington in 1977-78, New Zealand defeated England for the first time in a test match. Richard Hadley took ten wickets. Again a stab, he's gone, that's the wicket that's wanted. Taken by... It's great uh, for me to be part of this test because going back way back in 1937 when my father was playing for New Zealand against England, it's been 41 years that he's waited to see a New Zealand team beat England. It's tremendous for me to fulfil an ambition for him. And uh, the boys played superbly, really. It's tremendous. Hadley joined Nottinghamshire in the same season, a decision that was to bring about a critical change in his bowling. I'd signed a three-year contract uh, with Nottinghamshire from 78 through to, uh, what, 1980. And I was carrying niggling injuries with, with ankles and so on. And the last game of the season um, was uh, Notts playing Lancashire in a Sunday league match. And I got six for 12 off uh, the shortened Sunday league run-up, which was 15 paces. So with that, I went back to New Zealand and, uh, of course, I started you know, bowling off a short run, even in test cricket. And some of our uh, writers were, were very severe on me, and some of the players were very severe and critical, and felt that uh, I was taking shortcuts and not putting in the effort because the perception was that if you're a fast bowler, you've got to run in off 25, 30 paces and look as though you're bowling fast. It was a beautiful action, simple action, perfect outswing from middle and he was perfect in these sort of English and New Zealand condition or Aussie condition so that's why he was one of the highest wicket takers in world cricket uh, of his time but again everybody rates uh, Sir Richard Hadley one of the top bowlers of all time. Uh, 
Bishop now with 66. A good shout for LBW and he's given him out. In the first test of the 1980 series against the West Indies, Hadley took 11 wickets to lead New Zealand to a famous win. cricketer Richard Hadley is. Sure. In the second match of the series, he made 103, his first test match century. Fine innings by Richard Hadley, and what a great contribution he's made in this game, with the ball and now with the bat. Hadley finished with 19 wickets for the series. From this point in his career, he was recognised as an outstanding test cricketer an all-rounder of great quality. I think at the end of the day to be uh, regarded as an all-rounder along with the likes of say Ian Botham and Imran Khan Kapil Dev, the era that, that we played in, particularly the 80s, was really known as the battle of the all-rounders. I can certainly speak for myself and I'm pretty sure I can speak for the other guys. The first scores I would look at were if Pakistan were playing, what's Zimi done? If, uh, if, in, uh, if India, what's Caps done? Uh, and what's Paddles done down in New Zealand? Those are the first, you always look at those. And I'm sure they did the same with me. Oh, I've got him there today, five, he only got three. Yeah, and that's how it was. Or, oh, yeah, well, he's got a hundred. Oh, I'm just going to pull my finger out today. And yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, it's great. And a beautiful outswinger from Richard Hadley. And I think Ian Botham say no one can play those, and England are 30 for four. Whenever we had the confrontation, if you like, of playing against each other in a one-on-one -on -one situation, I think for all of us, um, the, the will and desire to outdo your opponent became that much greater, and we had some fierce contests. Facing Botham. And nearly decapitated Collins, it's going to be four runs. Bowling to Alan Border. Bell again for LBW. There it is. 300 test wickets for Richard Hadley. Hadley's 300th test victim was Alan Border in the first test of the 1986 home series. Congratulations all round for Richard Hadley, who becomes the sixth player in test cricket to take 300 test wickets. He followed that with seven for 116 in Christchurch, his 25th five-wicket haul. Hadley's relentless perfectionism led some to think of him as aloof and calculating. It really wasn't until I went to England in 78, actually, uh, to play county cricket, as I did for Nottinghamshire for, for 10 years, that really I honed in, honed in on my skills, my routines, my disciplines, in fact, the professionalism. And I had to look at my fitness, I had to look at my technique, had to look at my mental toughness. And if, if it means changing your personality, and at times being a little bit aloof, being single-minded, determined, or even calculating, so be it. Because at the end of the day, you're representing your country. There's a job to be done out there, and with a great deal of pride and satisfaction I made a number of sacrifices and if I was criticized for that well so be it but uh, that to me was instrumental in some of the successes I was able to enjoy. Sir Richard Hadley without him during that time New Zealand really would have struggled. God he was a professional athlete and I think through his efforts of playing cricket in England really helped him for, him to, for longevity he's a smart guy he's no dummy at all he knows technique and he really in-depth thinking and how do I get this guy out? How can I get the best out of myself? At Trent Bridge in 1986, Richard Hadley took 10 wickets in a match for the seventh time, equaling the world record. It was also the 27th time he'd taken five wickets in an innings, an outright world record. The spectacular success was built on a fundamental approach. And I had uh, four key words that actually went through my mind uh, when I was bowling and uh, uh, one was uh, rhythm, the other was off stump, the other one was desire and the other one lily. And just to clarify that, um, off stump um, was the target area that uh, I was trying to get that ball, so I was trying to be pretty consistent. Uh, rhythm, because I had to be relaxed and if the body was stiff and tense, it wasn't going to perform and function. So I had to have this rhythm, so I had to be loose and, uh, and relaxed. Desire, because the batsman's a problem. He's an obstacle. Got to be removed. And of course, Dennis Lilly um, was the role model, the inspiration. And particularly when things got tough, what would Dennis do? And he wouldn't give up. 100% man. 
In November 1988, Hadley broke Ian Botham's world record for test match wickets. Fifteen months later, he became the first man to take 400 wickets. Richard Hadley creates cricket history. All this he achieved without a top-class bowler supporting him from the other end. I was given a tremendous amount of responsibility in the side, firstly with the new ball. At the same time, I uh, have a tremendous amount of respect and appreciation for what other team members did. Uh, basically, I had the glamour role. I think anyone with a new ball, uh, the expectations are uh, quite high. Uh, but I had a lot of opportunity too, to, uh, to get out there and uh, get wickets and try and turn matches. I was competitive, a little bit combative, a touch of arrogance too at times, but I was very calculating in what I was trying to do. Hadley's relentless quest for perfection often contrasted with the attitudes of his New Zealand teammates, some of them amateurs and part-timers. We didn't play for money in the 70s. We played for the honour, the pride, the passion, all these common terms that are, that are so important. But um, as time went on, I became a professional, and so attitudes and, and that change. And uh, when I had the 10 years and, and knots and coming back to play for New Zealand at home and go on tours, you know, I changed uh, as a person. Uh, but at the same time, there are only two or three professionals in that environment. The rest were still amateurs. So to convince the amateur players to change their philosophies and their approaches to training and planning and preparation and to what it was all about, there was some reluctance, uh, it would be fair to say. But in time, um, there was a turnaround and, uh, and we enjoyed some wonderful successes in the 80s. And it's fair to say we were a professional side, not necessarily monetary-wise, but the way that we uh, planned and prepared. He's got it this time. So there we are, 3,000 runs for Richard Hadley in Test cricket. And he becomes the first player in Test history to score 3,000 runs and take 400 wickets. Hadley was knighted just before the second test of the 1990 series against England. He celebrated by scoring 86 from 84 balls. It is a splendid in what's probably his last appearance with the bat on this ground. To be recognised um, in cricket that way, uh, along with a number of other cricketers, is a tremendous uh, accolade, something I respect and appreciate. And, um, it's not the type of thing actually you, you work towards, it's, it's when other people want to recognise the contribution you've made to sports, specifically cricket, that uh, that's something that I really admire. I suppose traditionally uh, it was the batsman that uh, received that honour, but uh, being the first bowler, and there's the old classic line, isn't it, that I was, what, the first bowler to be knighted since the Francis Drake, but, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty common sort of saying. But, yeah, it, it's, it's rare and a uh, great privilege. In his final test match later in the series against England, Hadley took his 36th five-wicket haul, including two wickets in his last over. OBW, and will that be a wicket for Richard Hadley with his last ball in test cricket? He joined a very select group of players who've done that. He left the game universally recognised as New Zealand's greatest ever cricketer, and he remains one of that country's national sporting icons. In our country, uh, we like to have our, our heroes, and the media actually promote uh, the heroes. Uh, and I guess you get involved in certain things. You, you get asked to speak at functions, you're asked to promote a product and be involved in charities, which is all a tremendous compliment. That's it. That's it. Richard Hadley has his 100th bag of five in first-class cricket his 35th bag of five in test cricket. I believe that, that nations uh, need to have the heroes, people that uh, can look up to and admire and respect that particular person for what they've achieved and uh, they become good role models. Sir Richard Hadley played in 86 test matches. He took 431 wickets at an average of 22.3. He took five wickets in an innings on 36 occasions. He took 10 wickets in a match nine times. Hadley made 3,124 test runs at an average of 27.16, including two centuries. He completed 39 catches. 
In one day internationals, Hadley took 158 wickets at 21.56 and made 1,751 runs at 21.61. Quite frankly, I think as a pace bowler, you've got to be a special breed. And you've got to take the knocks. Sometimes the body hurts and you've got to keep uh, bowling with niggling injuries. But, boy, the rewards can be great. If you can get bags of five wickets or ten wickets in a match and change the course of the match, uh, you take a lot of the uh, accolades that go with it. The spearhead, like, he, he knew when to bowl at the best times with the new ball just before lunch, second new ball. He knew when to bowl when it was really average times he, he wasn't on. And he didn't have to bowl because he'd already done the damage. Um, I learnt more things off Richard Hadley than I did off any bowler. And he attacked every facet of my game. He was brilliant at it. Oh, gee, I wish he didn't play for New Zealand. I would have made some runs against them. But uh, He didn't sledge, didn't have to because I was out in three balls. He was good, very good. And they knighted him. Yeah, and he deserved it. And he varied his pace well. Like every, every great bowler, he was, he kept fit, he, he never, never injured, you know, and he was always bowling. And he had to do a huge amount of bowling for New Zealand. Um, and um, he, he shouldered the burden really well. Um, so you would say, you know, that he, he was another one of those great cricketers. When he first started, he was, he was pretty quick and aggressive and, and like a lot of fast bowlers start, a little bit all over the place. But then he refined his, his skill and his technique to a, to a very precise level, which ended up in him being a formidable opponent and, and, and very skillful, very intense, uh, studied the game, studied the opposition, really focused on the goals that he wanted to achieve and in the end achieved them. When you enjoy the game, you love the game and the team is starting to have success and there are personal successes and particularly with new players and young players coming into the environment that you want to assist them and you want to pass on knowledge And uh, because the game is greater than the individual. Uh, the game will always go on when you're long gone yourself as a player and um, so we've got to preserve, in the words of Bradman, uh, the traditions and values of the game and I've never forgotten what he said that um, you know everyone is a custodian of the game. It's up to each player, it's up to the media, it's up to the administrators to preserve the traditions, the values, the heritage of the game and play it in its fair spirit. Be competitive, go out there to win, of course, but, um, but do it the right way. No player has mastered the craft of pace bowling more completely. He was at his best right to the last ball of his career. For match after match, season after season, he carried New Zealand to victories against much stronger opposition. Sir Richard Hadley was one of the greatest fast bowlers of his time and one of the best all-rounders of his era. His place is beyond dispute as one of ESPN's legends of cricket.